is. 18. The game is going to be over. Mike Livingston doesn't want to play anymore, neither does the Chiefs. They've had enough. They want the football. They're going to blow the clock out. That's it. Chiefs are the world champions of professional football. Johnny, I know this had to be one of the greatest days of your life. How'd you feel about this one today? Well, how do you feel? Super. <laughs> and I know how I feel, too. I think everybody feels the same way. Boy, it was a great win for us, and, uh, uh, you know, we're world champions. Tom, what can you say? It speaks for itself, doesn't it? Okay, super. And how did it feel today? Super. Very super. I, I can't even describe how sweet it is, Tom. It was the sweetest victory of my life. Uh, it was a 40-man victory today. And it couldn't have happened to two nicer guys, Lamar Hunt and, of course, Hank Strand. You betcha. You betcha. For Lamar Hunt, it had been 10 years of agony and ecstasy. It began in 1960 when he founded the American Football League. Back then, Hunt's team was known as the Dallas Texans. But after the Texans won the AFL championship in 1962, Hunt moved his young football team to Kansas City. There, they found a home. Even after the National Football League champion Packers defeated the Chiefs 35-10 in the first Super Bowl, the Chiefs fans remained loyal. They backed their team in record numbers. But the big prize, the Super Bowl, eluded Hank Strand's club until this year. 1969 was the year the Chiefs rewarded their fans and destroyed forever the memory of that first Super Bowl game. The Chiefs roared through the exhibition season, winning six straight, including big wins over the Rams, the Raiders, and the St. Louis Cardinals. In their first regular season game, Kansas City drew first blood early in the first quarter on a 35-yard field goal by Jan Stinnerud. San Diego countered with a 50-yard field goal. Then the Chiefs came through with their first touchdown of the year. The Chiefs get a first and goal, only a foot from that goal line. Chiefs come out, they're in the eye formation. Buddy Arbanis, one tight end. Frank Fitz widens out to the left. Taylor becomes a slot back. Lenny Dawson on the goal line with a long count. He takes the snap, gives to Wendell Hayes. Touchdown! The Chiefs of 69 were the ultimate of pro football team, efficient on offense, and devastating on defense. Listen to this defensive gem by all-pro safety man Johnny Robinson. Wide to the right side will be Lance Allworth lining up as a tight end. Setbacks are Dick Post along with Hubbard. Fake handoff. Hadel back throwing from midfield. John on a crossing pattern. It's intercepted at the 20-yard line by Johnny Robinson. It's his second steal of the afternoon. John is still running. He stopped at the 27. The fourth interception by the Chiefs. The second by Johnny Robinson. And the defense continues to play brilliantly. The Chiefs' great pass rush put searing pressure on John Hadel all afternoon. Meanwhile, the Chiefs' Len Dawson and Otis Taylor had far less trouble penetrating the San Diego defense. Taylor caught two touchdown passes in the second half, including this 56-yard bomb. Out come the Chiefs. Running backs are Bobby Holmes and Mike Garrett. Richardson wide right. Frank Pitts wide to the left side. Lenny Dawson fakes the run. Len back to throw. The rush is put on him. Dawson is going to Taylor right over to the 20. At the 10. At the 5. At the oh! The Chiefs walked out of San Diego that afternoon with a thrilling 27-9 victory. The high-powered momentum of their tremendous preseason play had not waned a bit. The Chiefs were a team with a mission, and they came into Boston the following week for a game with the Patriots. On September 21st, the rebuilding Patriots simply were no match for the likes of Kansas City. The Chiefs whipped them badly. Kansas City's front four, Buchanan, Culp, Brown, and Mays poured into the Pats' backfield and rang quarterback Mike Tolliver clear out of Boston College's Alumni Stadium. The defense was once again impenetrable, and Kansas City won the game 31 to nothing. It was their first shutout since the fourth game of the 1967 season. It was not to be their last. That night on a flight back to Kansas City, the Chiefs were higher than a Boeing 707 that was carrying them back home. But Len Dawson was less ecstatic than the rest. 
He sat alone, nursing a knee, injured a few hours before by a Patriot lineman. Dawson was to be sidelined for six weeks. How about your knee? It looked like it was hurt. Well, it was. Something happened, Bill. I don't know exactly what it was. There isn't a great deal of pain there, but I felt a little unstable when I went back in after I got hit on a third down situation. I checked with the doctors there, and uh, they can't tell anything at the present time. I'm just going to have to wait. I just hope it isn't too bad. The following Sunday at Cincinnati, Coach Paul Brown's upstart Bengals turned the Chiefs' super dream into a nightmare. Jackie Lee, the capable Kansas City backup quarterback, started the game. Halfway through, he too was injured. Third string quarterback Mike Livingston, who'd played only four minutes in American Football League competition, was then thrust into the pit. The Bengals went right after him too with the blitz. And the Bengals beat the Chiefs 24 to 19. At Denver the next Sunday, the Chiefs with Livingston at the helm got back on the winning trail. Eight seconds remaining, a 55-yard attempt. Flory's holding, Sinarud kicks it. The boot is in the air, and it's good! A 55-yard field goal by Jan Sinarud, and the Denver Broncos, as time has run out, are dazed. That is a league record. In the second half, it was the speedy newcomer, halfback Warren McVay. As a running play to McVay, he's got good speed. He turns the corner to the 10 and the 5. Touchdown, McVay! The Chiefs get their first touchdown of the afternoon and take an 18-3 lead. Then strong safety man Jim Kearney puts six more points on the board. I come the Bronx. Wide left, Hafner. Wide right, Denson. Tom Beer again, the tight end. Lisk is back to throw. Rush is put on. He throws one. It's intercepted by Kearney. He's the 40. To midfield at the 40. At the 30. At the 20. At the 10. He cuts back at the 5. Touchdown for Jim Kearney. A 60-yarder. Isn't that beautiful? Sinarud added the extra point, his 14th point of the game. And it was all over. Kansas City 26, Denver 13. Mike Livingston in his first pro start added another scalp to the Chiefs totem pole. It was a big victory. Mike Livingston, a great game. There must have been a lot of pressure on you today. Yeah, Bill, we, uh, we had a lot of pressure today. Uh, Lenny and Jackie got hurt, and this was my first starting assignment. And and uh, I was pretty nervous out there today, but uh, we moved the ball real well, and uh, we won, and that's the main thing. The Chiefs proved something in Denver. They proved even the loss of such a key man as Len Dawson could not keep them from achieving their mission. Against Houston the next week, the Chiefs' first home game of the year, they continued their winning way. Roy Gorilla, who punts and plays kicks, can't get the tip off. There's a fumble, and Chiefs get them off the sleeve. Kansas City gets the ball away from Gorilla. A great break for Kansas City. A bad snap. He couldn't hang on. And the Chiefs get the ball to the two-yard line. The man who got it was Bob Stein along with Lanier. They're both dancing up and down. Two plays later, Mike Garrett scores. And before the first quarter is over, Roy Gorilla mucked another punt attempt. George Daney picked up the ball at the five-yard line and ran it in for a score. Then Stinnerud kicked a 30-yard field goal to make it 17 to nothing. The Chiefs' defense held Houston to 91 total offensive yards, recovering four fumbles and intercepting five Oiler passes. Final score, Chiefs 24, Houston nothing. The Chiefs' second shutout of the year. Hank Stram has a reputation of being one of the most innovative coaches in pro football. But this play against Miami the next week was not a Stram concoction. It just simply happened. Chiefs break the huddle. Second down and seven. Ball resting at the eight-yard line. Livingston at quarterback. He's operating from the pro set. Otis Taylor wide right. Livingston back. He wants to throw to Taylor. He does. Otis wide open at the 35. He's going to score. He's at the 50. At the 40. At the 30. He is at the 20. He's at the 15. And he's still running. Now he puts his back to Bobby Hall. And Hall is going to score. Oh! 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 In the second quarter, Mike Garrett turned in this Herculean effort. 
Deuter in the eye formation. Mike Garrett, Bobby Holmes, the setback. A wide receiver in Frank Pitts. A toss play coming to Garrett. He turns the corner. Goes to the outside of the five. Still on his feet. But he's still on his feet. Touchdown! Mike Garrett on a second effort. He kept his feet underneath him. What a drive! On defense, Aaron Brown had a great day. It's at cornerback Emmett Thomas, who intercepted two passes, including this one, which ended the ball game, gave the Chiefs a victory over the battling Dolphins. Well, Stifle now, twice in this drive, has made the big grab on third or fourth down. First down at the 41. Field goal won't help this club. They've got to go for it all. 37 seconds to go. Greasy back at midfield. Moves up in the pocket. Throws a good pass. It's bounced up in the air and intercepted at the ball by Emmett Thomas. At the back of the 20, at the 30, at the 35, he gets the block. He is hit to the ground at the 24. The ball was deflected. Emmett Thomas on the 12 made the grab. He ran it back 62 yards. And the tackle was made by Stryker. It was Jim Marcellus who tipped the football. But Emmett, who made the interception, the third interception today off Bob Creasy, and the Chiefs get the ball back at the 34, and now with 22 seconds to go, will kill the clock. Otis Taylor had one of the game-breaking plays today, the long pass. Otis, tell us about it. Well, Bill, the pass pattern was uh, slanty, and like uh, when I go over to Milton, I was able to get by the uh, cornerback, and uh, I ran the ball like about 78 yards before I had the ladder back to Bobby Holmes. Bobby's always... Uh, down there on the spot, in other words. When you catch a long ball, you can look for Bobby to come downfield and start to give you a helping hand. Uh, I kind of pulled up on the play, and when I saw that as far as I could go was about to the 19 and the 20-yard line, I saw Bobby, and I, I allowed the ball to him. The Chiefs were now 5-1, and one, losing only to Cincinnati. This week, the Bengals were coming to Kansas City. It was time for revenge. Running play to Wendell Hayes, off right tackle, touchdown! Wendell Hayes scores for three yards. Mike Livingston throws the football for Bobby Holmes, the 20, he makes the catch, he's at the 15, still on his feet, at the 10, still on his feet, he is cutting lateral at the 5, Bobby Turner scores! Touchdown! Dropping back to throw, Livingston throws it over the middle, touchdown! Touchdown to the Chiefs! Mike Livingston throws the ball, on a slant pattern, blocks to Richardson there! Back to throw is Livingston, he is throwing with the 20, the man's there, touchdown! Mike Garrett was wide open. Mike Garrett got the 10 yard touchdown. Livingston giving to Mac Bay, sweeping left end to the 20, the 25. He cuts back. He's got the first and 10 at the 35. May break it now. He's at the 40. He's at the 50. At the 40. At the 30. At the 20. He's going. He's going. He's going. There's a kick coming downfield. Underneath the ball, Ken Riley. Riley to the 10. He runs the ball out to the 20, and as he gets done, it's picked up by Goldie Sellers on the fumble, and he's gone. Goldie Sellers picks up the fumble of the 20, and he runs it in with 137 to go. Benarud converted all six extra point attempts, and the Chiefs walked off with a 42-22 victory. Against Buffalo the next week, the Chiefs' defense was tremendous. Marcellus and Robinson had two interceptions apiece, and Lanier had one. The front four dumped the Bills quarterback six times. Trailing seven to three before the half, Len Dawson came off the bench after a five-week layoff to spark the offense. But the star of the game was Jan Stinnerud. His performance earned him the EFL Player of the Week award. A snap the boot by Jan Stinnerud. It's up, it's long enough, good! A 48-yard field goal, good by Jan Stinnerud. His 12th three-pointer of the year. Jan Stenerud again will attempt the field goal. This attempt from right at the 40, rather make that the 37-yard line. Lenny Dawson to hold it. Jan Stenerud to kick it. Jan can give Kansas City its first lead of the afternoon. He'll kick from the 37. The ball is on the right hash mark. High snap, the ball's down, the kick's up. It's long enough. It's good. A 37-yard field goal gives Kansas City its first lead today of 9-7 to seven with 14.09 to play in the game. Kicking him in the 18-yard line, Jan Sinnerud has gone four for four today. Dawson the holder, the kick's down, it's up, it's good! An 18-yard field goal, good by Sinnerud, his fifth field goal of the afternoon. It occurred with 1.57 to go, and this gives Kansas City an eight-point lead of 15-7. to seven. The 34, Chiefs of the ball, 1.22 to go. Chiefs will sit on it. Running play to Garrett to the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown for Mike Garrett. 
for Kansas City, third down and five. Football wrestling at Buffalo five yard line. Three seconds to go in the ball game. Kansas City 22 and Buffalo seven. Long count by Lenny Dawson. The toss play to Garrett. He turns the corner. Touchdown for Mike Garrett. Mike Garrett on a five yard touchdown. His time has run out. It's Kansas City 28, Buffalo seven. Mike Garrett has scored two touchdowns in the waning seconds. On the 10 yard line, Dawson the holder. Center who kicks it up and good. That's the ball game. And the Chiefs who get two late touchdowns by Mike Garrett knock off Buffalo by the score of 29 to 7. Against San Diego on November 9th, the Chiefs treated their home crowd to another brilliant display of pass defense. The Kansas City pass rush led by Curly Culp on quarterback Marty Domrez five times. And the alert Chiefs secondary picked off an equal number of passes. Len Dawson completed 17 of 24 in the first full game test of his wobbly knee. And the resourceful Mr. Stram had struck again. Warren McVeigh throwing on a halfback option in Frank Pitts on a 50-yard scoring strike. Hank was happy. The Chiefs were in first place half a game ahead of Oakland and determined to destroy the New York Jets the following week. And were the Chiefs ever ready for the Jets? On the first play from scrimmage, the Jets fumbled, and Bobby Bell recovered. The very next play went like this. Chiefs are lining up now in a new formation, a cockeye formation. Back to throw, Len Dawson. Dawson wide open, Taylor's there, touchdown! Nobody's even close to Taylor. An 18-yard bomb. The Chiefs now lead 6 to nothing. The defense gets the Chiefs the ball. Len Dawson then fires the Taylor. Sinaroot's 13-yard field goal in the first quarter made it 10 nothing. But again, it was the defense that blew the game wide open. Sowers wide left. Wide to the near side, Don Maynard. Pete Lamont's a tight end. Quarterback Willie Namath checks the defense. Back to throw is Namath. Namath throwing with a 30. Throwing one deep for Sauer. It's up in the air and intercepted by Emmett Thomas. Namath sets his ball club. He's back to throw from the 30. Namath throws over the middle. It's intercepted. Johnny Robinson gets his eighth interception. Runs to the 20, to the 25. He's out to the 30, stops to the 32. Dawson hit Taylor in the second half with another touchdown pass to make it 34 to 10. And the Jets scored on a name of the Maynard pass. Then with the Jets threatening to score again, along came Willie Lanier. The ball of the 10, third down and one. Name of the quarterback. Don Maynard, a flanker, back behind the line by four yards. Namath fakes the run, but he's back to throw, throws quickly. The ball is up and intercepted by Lanier at the four. Out to the 20. He's to the 23, to the 25. Lanier breaks the tackle to the 30. The 35, he's at the 40. Lanier to the 45, and he'll be stopped at midfield. The game ended, Kansas City 34, the Jets 16. This has been a tough week for Lenny Dawson with the untimely passing of his father, but Lenny, the win today, 34-18 uh, over New York, must have been really satisfying to you. Well, there's no question about it. This is a very important game for us. We had to defeat the, the New York Jets, and we struck early in the ball game. We came out with a new uh, formation. They were caught completely unaware of what was going on. We got a break early with the fumble recovery. We decided, well, let's try to hit them quickly. If we can do that, maybe we can gain control of this football game. Otis Saylor broke wide open in the left side of the end zone. Fortunately, we were able to get the ball to him, and it was seven points for us. Tell us about the new formation. Well, Otis Taylor was lined up in the gap between the offensive guard and the offensive tackle. He was in the backfield. He was uh, released out of the backfield. No one held him up, so there was confusion on the part of the New York Jets as to who was supposed to guard who. It was man-to-man -man coverage down there, and they made a mistake, and fortunately, we capitalized on it. The fabulous Chiefs were now 9-1. But the tough Oakland Raiders were only half a game behind. And now they were meeting head on. Oakland scored first on a 10-yard field goal. Kansas City took over the lead on this play. Back Bay at tailback. Kansas City lining up with a double tight end alignment. Single flanker back from the five. First and goal. Running play to Mac Bay. Tries to turn the corner. He's going to take it in. Touchdown to the goal. The Chiefs opened it up in the second quarter. Double tight in alignment, high formation in the backfield, Lenny fakes the run, Dawson back to throw in the 40, he's throwing deep, Taylor's wide open, touchdown! A 31-yard bomb, Dawson to Taylor! A few minutes later, George Atkinson stole a pass from Fred Arbanan and ran 22 yards for a score. 
Zinnerud got three back for Kansas City on a 14-yard field goal. But with 1-10 remaining in the half, Daryl LaMonica hit Warren Wells for a touchdown, and it was 17-0 at the half. The Raiders poured it on in the third quarter. Another Blanda field goal and a 75-yard touchdown run with the intercepted pass by Dan Connors gave them the lead. But the Chiefs refused to roll over and play dead. On the pro set, Lenny's back to throw again. He pumps, he's throwing one deep. He's going to the far sideline to Frank. Hits and goes, touchdown! Frank hits with a 41-yard foul. But the Raiders really wanted this one. Their defense stiffened, and the game ended Oakland 27, Kansas City 24. Against Denver on Thanksgiving Day, the Chiefs were hungry for a victory. A center root field goal and two short touchdown bursts by McVeigh put the Chiefs on top of the half 17 to three. The third period turned into a grueling defensive battle with neither team scoring. But with only 42 seconds gone in the final period, Emmett Thomas gave the big holiday home crowd something to be thankful for. A dent in his wide left. Pay down again for Tenzie. 14-22 to go, 17-3 Kansas City. Kenzie Stanley flags her down, the pass is there. It's intercepted at the 47 by Emma Thomas. He's at the 30, the 20, got it four. He's at the 10, the 5, touchdown! A 47-yard interception by Emma Thomas of Kansas City. The flag was thrown on the offensive play near the 28, but Emma Thomas had just stolen the pass, the 47, and gone the distance for the Kansas City Chiefs with 14-11 to go in the ball game. That proved to be the game winner. But it got tight in the closing minutes. Two Denver touchdowns narrowed the score to 24 to 17. Then Denver, with 39 seconds to go in the game, tried a desperation onside kick. And it backfired. There's the kick. It goes 10. It's picked up by Bobby Bell. He's at the 40. He makes score. He's at the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Bobby Bell! Bobby Bell picked up the short kick and has just gone 53 yards for the touchdown. On the onside kick, Bell, who according to Jim Lynch, is the best athlete in the squad, picked it up like a shortstop, turned the bend, looked like a halfback. When he hit the 40, you could tell he would score, which he did. The Chiefs now lead Denver 30 to 17. Against Buffalo on December 7th, Kansas City played their 13th game of the season. Lucky number 13 for Jan Stenerud. Zinnerud attempting one from the last hash mark of 52 yarders. I snap the ball down the kicking tee. It's end over end. This one is up. Good! He kicks it through! That ties a pro record. 12 in a row by Jan Zinnerud. I didn't want to say it until he kicked it. A 52 yarder by Zinnerud. A low line drive with 11.05 to go. They're going to give him the ball back. The Chiefs have taken a 10 to 3 lead against Buffalo. We are about to see a pro record. Jan, as you know, has kicked 12 straight field goals. His last one came from 52 yards away. The ball will be spotted at the eight-yard line, and Jan, now if he kicks this field goal, will break a pro football record. This may look like an easy kick, but his greatest problem now is to get the ball up quickly enough. He's got to be kicking on the right hash mark. Len Dawson is the holder from the eight. We have eight minutes, 15 seconds to go in the quarter. It's up and good! A pro football record! An eight-yard field goal by Jan. He's now kicked his 13th in a row. That breaks the existing pro record held by Lou Groza, 12 in a row. Jan with a 52-yarder, and now that eight-yarder has a pro record, and let's pick up the big applause. I'll tweet it is. Jan Stenerud broke Lou Groza's record today. The record was 12 consecutive field goals. And today, Jan kicked five. Jan, a great, great day. Well, thank you, Bill. Of course, it's nice when you win. It's, it's all right. It's still, it makes you feel even better when you have a good day and you win. It's no fun to have a good day and the team loses. So I feel real happy about today's game. You tied Groza's record with one from 52 yards. What was your feelings when you went in to kick it? Really, Bill, I forgot about the record right then. I think, fortunately, I did. If I thought about it, I may not have made it. I thought about the record when I broke it, the 13th of short field goal. I thought about the record then, but when I tied it, I had, didn't think about the record at all. Stenerud went on to kick numbers 14, 15, and 16 consecutively and established himself as the most formidable place kicker in pro football. The 22-19 win over the Bills gave Kansas City an 11-2 record. Oakland had 11 wins, one loss, and a tie. This Sunday, in the final regular season game of the merging AFL, these two Titans were set to do battle for the championship of the Western Division. But more important, 
the opportunity to host the Houston Oilers in the first round of the playoffs. To the loser went the unenviable task of taking on the world's champs, the New York Jets at Shea Stadium. Both teams were psyched up for the game. It was a prehistoric, primeval slugging match. And when the dust had cleared and the clock had run out, Oakland had beaten the Chiefs 10 to 6. The Chiefs had come out second best in regular season play. But now, the three-game playoff season was about to begin. From here on in, there was no such thing as second best. Saturday, December 20th, the Chiefs tangle with the New York Jets within the cold, blustery confines of Shea Stadium. A packed house of 63,000 rabid Jets fans were on hand to cheer the home team on. The Jets drew first blood on a 28-yard field goal by Jim Turner, but the Chiefs hung in their tough. Ball of the Jets, 47-yard line, Dawson at quarterback. The backs are split. Lenny drops back to throw in the pocket. He's looking for a screen pass. It's caught by Wendell Hayes in the 45 to midfield. To the Jets, 40. To the 35. He's all the way to the New York 30-yard line. Backs are split. Frank Pitts is wide left. Dropping back to throw. Dawson over the middle. It's caught by Wendell Hayes. He's at the 25 of the 20. He's at the 15 and falls forward to the 14-yard line. Big call by Lenny. He threw to his fullback, Wendell Hayes. He caught the ball, went upfield for a 16-yard pickup. Jan Sinnerud will attempt the field goal for Kansas City. It'll bring up fourth down with the Chiefs and 10 yards to go. Jan Sinnerud a moment ago attempted one from the 47, but he had a difficult time of it because he kicked right into the wind. This will be a 23-yard attempt. The ball is on the left hash mark. The ball is down. It kicks up. It's long enough. It's good. And Jan Sinnerud ties the ball game at 3-3 on the first play of the second quarter. And Kansas City just went 65 yards. The Kansas City Chiefs three, the New York Jets three. The rest of the first half was a Mexican standoff. And the half ended with a score tied at 3-0. But in the second half, the Chiefs' devastating pass defense really went to work. 5.50 to play in the third quarter. Still tied, 3-3. On the quick count, Namath back to throw. He throws one deep for Bay Turner, and it's intercepted by Jim Marcellus. He's at the 10, running back to the 15 to the 20. He's out of the 30-yard line. Jim to the 35 to the 40 and written down. That was Marcellus' first of the day, and it led to a Kansas City field goal by Jan Sinnerud moments later. This attempt from 25 yards away. The ball is on the left hash mark. A few minutes, 12 seconds to go in the third quarter. Kick good! A perfect field goal by Jan Sinnerud. And the Chiefs lead against the New York Jets 6-3. If the Chiefs ever had an opportunity to prove that their defense was the best, it had to be now. A pass interference penalty gave the Jets first and goal on the Kansas City 1. Listen to this brilliant goal line stand. As a running play to Matt Snell behind right guard. Matt Snell behind the right guard is hit at the goal line by Johnny Robinson. He has tackled a yard shy from that goal line. Good tackling by John. He had to make the play along with Lanier and Gary May. The ball is only six inches shy from the goal line. 13.45 remaining. Six to three, Kansas City. Jets are huddling at the 10-yard line. Joe Namath now sends his tight end wide. That's Wayne Stewart. Left end is outside the left tackle. Running play coming off the Mathis. Mathis behind his left guard is stopped at the goal line. Mathis goes straight ahead. Lanier hits him. He gets help from Buck Buchanan and Curly Culp as well and John Robinson. And again, the Jets did not make it. It's third down and one. A seat squirmer here at Shea Stadium. 13-13 remaining. Two running plays straight ahead have not gotten the Jets over yet. Good goal line defense by Kansas City, but now the pressure's really on. And the backs are split. Bill Mathis, the running back, and Matt Snow. Joe Namath awaits the snap from his center. Running play is fake now. Joe Willie rolling to his right. He's scrambling. He's going to the right side, and Joe Namath dumps the ball. He is tackled near the seven-yard line. What pressure put on by Bobby Bell. Bobby Bell made the Jets quarterback commit himself. 
he dumped the football under pressure because Bobby Bell, Jim Lynch, and Kearney played it just like you want. And now the Jets will go for a field goal from the eight-yard line with 12.46 to play. The fantastic Chiefs defensive team has come off the field in tears. That's how emotionally high they were. Now, if one moment were to be selected in the 10-year history of the Chiefs as being the most meaningful, that would have to be the one. Under tremendous pressure, the Chiefs showed what they are made of. The Jets pick up three points to tie the score on Turner's eight-yard field goal, but the Chiefs pick up 100 points worth of self-confidence. Following the kickoff, the fired-up Chiefs offense led by quarterback Len Dawson took it right back to the Jets. Wendell Hayes and Mike Garrett, the setback. One wide receiver, a double tight end alignment. Lenny takes the snap. He fakes the run, but he'll be back to throw. He goes one deep for Richardson. Touchdown! A 19-yard bomb. Center route converted, and the score was 13-6 Kansas City. But to Joe Namath, as he looked across at the 11 keyed-up faces of the Kansas City defensive unit, the score must have seemed like 100-6 in favor of the Chiefs. Back to throw at the 25. Joe Namath. He throws one deep for... Sauer is tipped away by Emmett Thomas. Namath will throw the ball again from the 25. Namath going deeper in the pocket. He is rushed. He scrambles. He throws the ball. It's incomplete. The rush put on at the 30-yard line by Aaron Brown. He laid it over that defensive stand as Buck Buchanan. He's jumping up and down. He's so happy. Boozer goes in motion. One running back. That's Matt Snell. Namath will throw from the 22. Throws it over the middle. It's incomplete at the 7-yard line. It's nicely broken up by John Robinson. He fell to the tight end, Pete Lamont. He played the tight end very well. But in the last two minutes, the Jets were on the Kansas City 14 and threatening. Enter Jim Marcellus. Third down and 10. At the 14, Joe Namath from a pro set. He's got a slot to the far sideline. Takes the snap. He'll throw the ball from the 22. Namath throws to the far sideline. It's intercepted by Jim Marcellus. He runs it out of the seven-yard line, and the Chiefs defense has done it with a minute 42. Jim Marcellus with his second interception. The Chiefs coaches to our right are dancing in the street. They should. Jimmy Marcellus with his second interception, the third of this half on Joe Namath, and you can't say enough for that play by Jimmy Marcellus. The Chiefs won a great one today, 13 to 6 from the New York Jets. And I would have to say, Buck Buchanan, that one of the things that made it possible for this victory and to move on now against Oakland was the great goal line stand at the one-yard line when the Jets had it, first down, goal to go. Well, uh, Bill, uh, Greg, the only thing that we probably could think about was trying to stop them. Uh, we all looked around at each other, and we said that this could be our whole season right down this one-yard line. So I think we just dug in there and uh, a little extra effort uh, from everybody on our football team. And uh, we came with the play, and we made them. Uh, we made them. Uh, didn't get that uh, that that last touchdown. And um, I think I was so I was probably the proudest guy on the field, especially proud of our defensive unit when we hung in there like we did on that one yard line for four downs and stopped the New York Jets. Jim Marcellus came up with a big play. It was third and ten on the 13 of the New York Jets. And you take it from there, Jim Marcellus. Well, at that time we was in a combination coverage, and Jim Turner was my man. They gave him a little out move and tried to come in on a quick slant. And I was, was able to step in front of him and, and take the ball away. One big one down, two bigger ones to go. On January 4th, 1970, the Oakland Raiders and the Kansas City Chiefs met in the 10th and last AFL championship game. It was to be a battle to the death. There was no retreat from this one. Through most of the first quarter, both teams played it cool, feeling each other out taking no chances, probing for a weakness, feinting and jabbing. Then with the first quarter almost over, Darrell LaMonica led a Raider march downfield and carried the ball over the goal line himself on a three-yard sweep. It was to be the last time the Raiders scored all afternoon. The Chiefs' defense grew more ferocious with every passing moment. Len Dawson took it from there. McVay goes in motion. Back to throw, Lenny Dawson. He has time to throw. He's firing one deep, wide open. Frank Kitts, he makes the catch. He has run out of bounds at the one-yard line. Frank Kitts caught a 42-yard pass. The cornerback blew the coverage. Nehemiah Wilson got bumped out of bounds at the one-yard line. And the Chiefs get the big play, their biggest of the day, a 42-yarder. Double tight end alignment. Two running backs, a wide receiver in Taylor. The backs are in tight. 
Long count by Lenny Dawson. He sends Wendell Hayes in for the touchdown. Wendell Hayes behind right guard. He got the blocking from Buddy Mormon and Dave Hill. And on came the big Chiefs defense. Otto leads out the offensive huddle. The wide man on the far side is Charlie Smith, a halfback. German in the slot. They've got a slot to the near side. Bolitnikoff, the wide man. Back to throw. The Monica, he is sacked. Did he get creamed by Aaron Brown? Aaron Brown hit him first, and then he got up from Buck Buchanan. That ended the half, but not the Kansas City pass rush. Daryl LaMonica back to throw the ball for Oakland. Second down and 10, and he's throwing that ball deep, and it's broken up with a five-yard line. Daryl LaMonica trying to throw that ball deep again, and they were throwing to the far sideline to Larry Todd. A flag is down, and LaMonica's hurt. Daryl LaMonica got that right elbow hit. Aaron Brown again came in, and we have seen him decked already three times, and out comes LaMonica. With LaMonica, the league's most valuable player out of action, the Raider offense came to a sputtering halt. Meanwhile, the Chiefs' defense kept coming and coming. Second down and 10. Bland at two for five or 23 yards. Bland over the middle. It's going to be intercepted by Emmett Thomas. He runs the ball out. He will run it to the five and not much farther than that. He's still on his feet. He's run out to the six. The Chiefs narrowly missed getting trapped for a safety on the ensuing series of downs. But then Dawson got hot. Dawson at quarterback. Lenny will go back to pedal. He's back in the end zone, eight yards. Dawson throws a wobbler intended for Taylor. And Otis makes a remarkable catch. Great grab by Taylor. He makes the catch of the 37-yard line. Frank Pitts wide left. Flanker back. Richardson back to split again. Wendell Hayes in the ball game. Good pass protector. Lenny back. Swings a pass. Dawson hits Bobby Holmes at midfield. He's at the 40. Cuts back at the 35. And he has dropped at Oakland's 34-yard line. Lenny Dawson throws to his fullback, Bobby Holmes. The Chiefs have uncracked their offense. They move downfield for another gain. And a first and 10 at Oakland's 34-yard line. That a 25-yard pickup. A pass interference penalty against Oakland gave Kansas City a first down at the Raiders' 7. Lenny Dawson gives on a running play to Bobby Holmes. He turns the corner. He scores! In the fourth quarter, LaMonica was back in the game. But the Chiefs were ready. LaMonica will throw the ball from midfield. Has some time. Throws over the middle. It's intercepted by Kearney at the 20. He is trying to get some blocking. Kearney to the 25. Runs to the outside. He is still on his feet. He's still running. And he is finally tackled at the 31-yard line. The Chiefs fumbled moments later at their own 24. And Oakland had the ball again. But not for long. Stopping back to throw, LaMonica, he's at the 35, he throws, it's intercepted! Marcellus with the 10, running wide to the 20, the 25, to the 30, stop to the 33. Not long after this, Oakland had the ball again, until Emmett Thomas put the game away with this play. The ball at Kansas City's 37, LaMonica will throw him in a 45, he is throwing one deep for Warren Wells, it's intercepted the 20 by Emmett Thomas. Back to the 30, to the 40, he may break it, he's at midfield, he's at the 40, at the 30, that's back to the 25, on his feet to the 20, Emma Thomas is finally stopped at Oakland's 18-yard line. And with 7.13 to go in the ball game, that will be the biggest play to date. And then came Mr. Sinaroo. The ball is on the left hash mark, this will be a 22-yard attempt. 4.50 to go, the ball's down, it kicks up, good! A 22-yard field goal, perfect by Jan Sinaroo. It gives Kansas City a 17-7 lead. The Chiefs won it today, 17-7 over the Oakland Raiders. Now move on to the Super Bowl. And one of the men responsible, the great rush of Aaron Brown today. And Aaron, what did you do today that was different than in previous games at Oakland this year? Well, going into the ball game today, we thought that uh, uh, outside pressure didn't affect Daryl LaMonica very much. So uh, we concentrated on getting a little bit more inside rush and try to disturb his timing. We noticed that... Uh, a lot of their pass patterns depended on timing, and we figured if we could destroy the timing on their passes, that uh, we could destroy their passing game. It was all over now, and the Chiefs were on their way to the Super Bowl. The pressure and the tension of Super Sunday began to build the day after the Chiefs won the AFL championship. The experts immediately installed the Vikings as a 13-point favorite. They said Minnesota's front four, the four Norsemen, would bury Len Dawson. They said the Vikings' defensive unit, the Purple People Eaters, would stop the Chiefs' offense cold. 
they raved about Minnesota's quarterback, Joe Kapp. But despite the so-called experts, the Chiefs kept on preparing for Super Sunday. This was it. The biggest of the big games. And the Chiefs were ready. How sweet it was going to be. The Chiefs kicked off to Minnesota to open the ball game. The Vikings marched across midfield before the Chiefs' defense dug in. Third down and 10 at the Kansas City 39-yard line. Henderson wide left to the near side, Gene Washington. Fake running play, back to throw, Joe Cap. He sets up throwing over the middle. It's incomplete at the 27-yard line. They were trying to John Beasley, and Willie Lanier nearly intercepted for Kansas City. The Vikings on fourth down chose to punt. Kansas City took over at their 17 and marched for the game's first score. It's third down coming up, and the Chiefs have some three yards to go for a first and ten. Wide to the far side, Taylor. Frank Pitts is wide left. This spreads the Viking defense. Normally, they like to play a zone. Now the Chiefs with a slot to the near side. Dawson throws at midfield. is caught by Pitt. He's to the 40. He is still on his feet and stopped to the 36. Then the Viking defense stiffened. And the Chiefs now will go for a long-range field goal. Jan Sinrud comes in the ball game. Holding again will be quarterback Lenny Dawson. The ball is down. The kick's up. It's in over in. The boot is up and long. It's good. A 48-yard field goal is good by Jan Sinrud with 6.52 to play in the first quarter. Kansas City 3, the Minnesota Vikings nothing. Minnesota got the ball back. But Kansas City's aggressive defense contained them. The Vikings had to punt once again. Dawson moved the Chiefs to field goal range with pinpoint passing. And again, Sinerud did his thing. Jan Sinerud will attempt one from the 33-yard line. 13-24 to play in the first half. This could give Kansas City a six-point lead. The ball's down, the kick's up, it's perfect. A 33-yard field goal, good by Jan Sinerud. There's time on the call in the field with the score. Kansas City six, the Minnesota Vikings nothing. The Chiefs were on the attack, both offensively and defensively. Back to throw, Joe Cap. Cap looks his field over, rifles one, is caught in the 45, a fumble by Henderson, and the Chiefs get the ball right back. Johnny Robinson recovers. Johnny Robinson picked up the fumble to the 46, and the Chiefs had their first break. Two plays later, Minnesota's Paul Krause intercepted a Dawson bomb intended for Taylor. But the Chiefs' defense never let up. Minnesota had to punt once more. On this offensive drive, the Chiefs pulled a Hank Stram special out of the hat. Listen. Glenn Dawson on the end around play, giving to Frank Pitts to the 40. At the 35, at the 30, he is run down the 25-yard line. The end around play to Frank Pitts, good for 19 yards. And a Kansas City first down. Three plays later, Jan Stenerud attempted his third field goal of the game. Stenerud has gone two for two this afternoon. He'll kick from the right hash mark. He said a lot determines how the line blocks and how the holder does it. The kick is up, and it's good again. Another field goal by Jan Sinerud, this one from 25 yards away. Timeout is called in the field with a score. Kansas City 9, the Minnesota Vikings nothing. On the ensuing kickoff, the Chiefs broke the Vikings back. Jan Sinerud kicking on the 40-yard line, and the two deep men are two yards away from that goal line. This one is not as long as in the first quarter. It's a 10, the ball is fumbled by Charlie West. The Chiefs go over, go to the Vikings. At the 19, the Chiefs recover. The Chiefs specialty squad goes downfield, and E.J. Holland was the man who went firing in for that loose football to the 19. And West got his shoulder pad on it, really never got possession, and the Chiefs recover that football. Ramey Prudhomme was the man who picked the ball up at the 19-yard line. There was no way the Vikings were to stop them now. They marched to the five where Mike Garrett got the call on third down. Richardson wide left. Again, the Chiefs with two tight ends, and the running backs are split. Third down and five. Running play coming to Garrett on a trap. Touchdown! Garrett scores in the five. With 5.34 remaining here before the half, the Chiefs have just driven 19 yards and six plays on a trap block. Garrett took it in, and you just saw outstanding line blocking up front. The pulling guard made that play, Mo Mormon. He is 6'4 and 252, Kansas City's number one draft choice a season ago. The half ended with the score, Kansas City 16, Minnesota nothing. In the third quarter, the Viking offense caught fire. 
They marched to the Kansas City four, where quarterback Joe Cap handed Dave Osborne for the touchdown. The Vikings were on the scoreboard 16 to seven, but the Chiefs were not to be denied. Len Dawson having a great day, put the ball game on ice with this pass. Dawson, quick count. Dawson, close sideline pattern. Taylor, Taylor, oh! 30, 25, he cuts back, 20, he's going to go! Root converted to give the Chiefs a commanding 23 to 7 lead. The Chiefs defense, sensing victory, socked it to the Vikings quarterback. Minnesota's ball, 47 yard line, is now third and three, and this is a big third down call for Joe Cap. Wide to the right, Henderson. Henderson, Cap fading. Cap is being right. Cap throws down the middle. Intercepted. Intercepted. Really Lanier. Lanier out to the 40 to the 43. First down, Chiefs. 10.44 left to go. Minnesota hasn't given up one moment. Joe Cap trying to lead his team downfield. The Chiefs putting tremendous pressure on Joe Cap. It hasn't been that way with Dawson. The Chiefs offensive line has done the job today. Cap with the ball. He's going to fade again as he rolls right. The rush is on again. Pass downfield. It's going to be intercepted. Johnny Robinson. John to the 50. Chiefs have the football. John Robinson, who's playing with a tremendous injury, intercepts the football, keeps ball at the 50, and the dejected Minnesota Vikings go off the field. Washington to the right, Henderson to the left. Chiefs dug in defensively, cap with the ball, you fade back, the blitz is on, but you can't Aaron Brown, over on the play. The Vikings hit the ball at the 17, and cap is hurt. Aaron Brown almost tore the head off of Joe Cap. The Chiefs go over to try to help him up. He doesn't want any help. He needs it, but he doesn't want it from the Chiefs. It was all over now. The Kansas City Chiefs were devastating. With less than a minute to play, the Chiefs had the ball and weren't about to give it up. 20 seconds. 19, 18. The game is going to be over. Mike Livingston doesn't want to play anymore, neither do the Chiefs. They've had enough. They want the football. They're going to blow the clock out. That's it. Chiefs are the world champions of professional football. The Kansas City Chiefs had just pulled off the biggest massacre since the Battle of the Little Bighorn. After the game, Hank Stram, the winningest coach in AFL history and the only man to win three AFL championships, talked about the biggest game of his illustrious career. This just has to be our greatest moment as a football team. You know, as, as I look back on the game today and, and think about this great Minnesota team and, and ask myself why we won it and how we won it, I immediately think about our defensive linemen, then our linebackers, and then, of course, our defensive backs. And then it doesn't stop there. It goes to our offensive linemen, our offensive backs, and then, of course, the great job that Lenny Dawson did at the quarterback position. Then you have to go to our specialty team. And when everything's all said and done, what does it spell? It spells 40 people. 40 dedicated people who are willing to make every personal sacrifice necessary for us to achieve this pinnacle. And this is just the way it was, Bill, and uh, I'm very proud of the fact that we wear the crown of champions of professional football and also the American Football League for the, fa for the last time. It's great for our organization, it's great for our football team, and of course we're very proud too of the fact that we represent and share this great honor with our great fans of Kansas City who we think are the very best in the world. The Kansas City Chiefs had won the big one. Hail to the champions of all of professional football. Hail to Pitts, Tyre, Buddy, Holub, Mormon, Hill, and Arbana. Hail to Taylor, Dawson, Garrett, Holmes, McVay, Richardson, and Hayes. Hail to Mays, Culp, Buchanan, 
Brown, Lynch, Lanier, and Bell. Hail to Marcellus, Thomas, Kearney, Robinson, Belzer, Mitchell, and Sellers. Hail to McClinton, Zaney, Prudhomme, Stein, Prosh, Lothmer, and Hurston. Hail to Sinarud, Wilson, Livingston, Flores, Podolak, Stram, and Hunt. Hail to the champions. Hail to the Chiefs, the Super Chiefs, the champs of the football world. <laughs>